thank you everyone for coming back to my channel this is toby and uh just promoting safety engineering thank you everyone and uh yeah so we're gonna be doing this would be i think the third video in the series pro um for um bow ties so today i'm gonna be talking about a certain type of bow tie called it's for security um if you want to under fully understand what um bow ties are all about the first you can watch the first two videos in the series or on the playlist so thank you everyone please like and sub um, like the video it really helps on youtube and subscribe to the channel so um security that's what this uh, bow tie is about and as i explained in the former um should i say videos how this bow tie thing works so on the left we have your causes what could cause this top event the top event doesn't necessarily mean the worst case scenario but it's where where there's a loss of control where everything gets um falls falls out of place and then it could escalate to a really terrible consequence if the barriers around do not work well if there are holes in the barriers like i explained also in the cheese <laughs> in the cheese uh swiss cheese model with the holes in the barriers so these are all on the left hand side are the are the courses these are various barriers for each course this is a course this is a course this is a course and these are the barriers which means the safeguards are the against each course on the left hand side are the prevent preventative safeguards to prevent us getting here when we get here or if we eventually get here which is a top event which and then and that means everything that we've lost control here then we have other barriers here which are which are mitigative barriers which means the uh, the accident has more or less happened or a near miss and we have all this to stop it from turning into a full um a really terrible situation so um without talking too much i don't want to make this video too long so this one is on security and you can use it it's oil and gas but you can use it for the security if you're planning the security for anyone that is pretty um should i say important or someone that um or anyone you don't want anything bad to happen to that um, you really have to plan around guarding the press person probably somebody a uh, top person in politics maybe a president or something you can use this and try to figure out where things can go wrong and to get your barriers in place to look at worst case scenarios so we are looking at security and what is the top event this is the sub top event exposure to armed attack organized crime the person could be kidnapped or the person could be exposed to violence all that is could be a top event meaning this is the position where point where everything has gone wrong so this so let's say you are in your workshop now and you want to start your bow tie the first thing you have to look at is security and then what is the top event it could you could come up with various top events but this uh, is the like should i say the worst case scenario you should have or it could be maybe exposure to a chemical weapon or to to some biological weapon that could be a top event and then on the right hand side you have different ways of maybe curing the person or treating the person or would letting the person put on some kits that would not um that would make the person be able to withstand such an attack maybe a chemical attack so but this is security looking at exposure to armed attack organized crime kidnapping so on the left we would so starting with your workshop you would come up with your top events and then from your top events you go to your threats okay so what are the threats that could lead to this the um inadequacy of government security force that could be um if you notice if um whoever wants to attack you or kidnap you or whatever the situation may be if um they notice that there's an inadequacy of government security force 
that could actually motivate them. It could be a threat that would encourage them to be like, whoa, these guys are not pro properly protected. Maybe we could kidnap them and make some cash. So that's one. You have third party interference. That could be another threat. It depends. Remember, your bow tie depends on the scenario in which you are in. This was for some, some facility where they had to travel through some rough terrain to do their work. Uh, so say it's somebody very important. Now you're, you'll be looking at um, what are the threats. Okay, maybe some nasty um, country. If it's a top government official, maybe another country wants to attack them, wants to kidnap somebody there, or maybe terrorists. They want to get to the president. How do they want to do that? Um, or how you're going to look at the threats and then you look at the barriers. How can you stop it? That, um, so you can look at maybe diffusing the situation. Those would be barriers. But anyway, I digress. Then there's civil unrest. If there's civil unrest, it could also lead to this. That means like everything is breaking down. There's no serious security from the, um, from the security agencies, the police. The... So if there's civil unrest, that could definitely affect... Um, that could lead to an exposure to armed attack or kidnap then military pressure presence aggression and accidental unlawful discharges um probably here there could be some um there could be military presence which could be which is normal in some parts of the world to use military personnel to protect people going to work on some facilities and when they they could get, should I say, aggressive, and they, sometimes they could be unlawful discharges of their weapons. So that could also be a some exposure to violence, poor community relations. Wherever you are doing your work, if you you don't relate with, well with the people around, that could also be a threat. Inadequate physical barriers at the facility. That's um, your fencing, your doors, your security doors, your access control on the facilities, everything, your surveillance is everything on point, and then ineffective monitoring and surveillance. So if um, even you have the highest walls, but you don't have any guards around to see what's happening, because the, the thing is, this faci this um, people or uh, they, this might could also happen right on the facility, not just in transit. And if the facility is not properly protected, monitored, you could actually have a top event happening here, which means they could come into the facility and kidnap. So um, I let me go back to the first inadequacy of government security. So your site security plan, those are the barriers. So if the government doesn't provide enough security you have your site security plan you'd engage in government security engage government security agencies try to those are, that's another barrier since they are not really they don't really you don't really have enough of them you can like encourage them try to talk to them and bring them into whatever is where you want to them to help um, waterway control by security operatives that means if you are traveling by water or if the facility is surrounded by water you have patrol by security operatives and access control preventing unauthorized access you have your static beats you have your fence patrol to prevent unauthorized access that's this is waterway patrol in case there's water around the facility or in case you travel by water and then this is fence patrol this is around the perimeter fence of the facility there should be some kind of patrol there should be a daily patrol that goes around then there should be surveillance cctv those are ways you could um, those are barriers you could have for this then third party interference that means people from the area they may be locals living around that facility and then so there could be third party interference so it's always good to have good community liaison officers that's the clo uh, you appoint clos to liaise with the community regularly to so that the so that the facility the personnel on the facility and the people in the community the locals around have a good relationship community development program of course you should try to do stuff to help the community so that they are happy with you 
and um, whatever way you can give back to help of course whatever charitable means help them help out so that um, you're on good um, really you have a good relation working relationship with them fencing of facilities of course that is, could also be a a barrier to third party interference because even no matter how well you relate with them there may be some funny people who don't mind jumping the fence maybe to come steal stuff or kidnap people so it's good to fence your facility and intelligence from authorities yes it's very good to have uh, to for against third party interference if you have authorities that relate um, that relates well with the with the community that could give you a lot of information get you information which like um if anything is being planned you would care that we with good intelligence and it can help prevent these top events so remember these are still all preventive barriers you have your civil unrest which means maybe some political unrest there's um issues around and um, then yeah of course you develop and implement security management system that you should have your document fully fleshed out and everyone should know what they are supposed to do in the case of a security breach so you should have a security management system in place you should have your site security plan which you talked about earlier then external security agents by government for movements so in case you have to move around in that area where there's civil unre unrest you should have uh oh, okay i brought this up get rid of it you should have external security agents by government for movements gsa supports presence at locations then you should have your patrol training of staff on how to act in community unrest situations maybe you should tell them uh, by maybe by 6 p.m everyone should be indoors if it's not safe or you should be back on the facility or once it's 9 p.m don't go out without your security this is all important training of staff on how to act in community unrest situations pre-job location assessments of course this you have to before you it even gets to this stage the civil unrest before you go to that place you should have a very good assessment of the kind of dangers or hazards you expect so if there's going to be civil unrest you should have gotten information about it and and know how to handle it or prepare for it in case you still have to go or avoid going or use some other routes and then there's information to staff prior to mobilization so the staff should be fully aware of what they are getting into the situation that the civil unrest are ahead and um, be prepared for it so this could also be useful for probably military when they are going to places like um, places that are dangerous like you're going to war zones not exactly war zones but places where you know they may not be welcome so it's good to have all this um um, you could do a bow tie for them which worst case scenario they get attacked they um, they get kidnapped and then of course all this would be um, ways to let them know um, to to look into the situation and let put in barriers put barriers in place to avoid this top scenario happening then i said also military presence sometimes military protection could also sometimes maybe work against you if they're not properly trained or if they are too aggressive that could lead to accidental unlawful discharges so if you are going to have um, like military with you always engage external security agents on rules of coexistence with civilians and human rights so if you have them you should also have them fully uh, like trained to understand that everyone has rights and not to um, be should i say rough with the locals and stuff like that you should they should be properly trained on coexistence with civilians you know because this is what this the, look at it in this scenario you know that there's going to be problems in this place you probably would be working or going to you've done your pre-job location assessment and then you 
take security along with you but those the security themselves could be a problem they may be too hostile to the people around or to the locals who may not have anything to do with the hostility at the place and then so they should be properly trained on how to live with them and not um, how to aggravate the situation execute consequence management consequence management for violations and performance through command leadership so if they step out of line of course you should there should be some consequence that's the military if they do step out of line maybe accidental discharges or the maltreats normal civilians around you should have some some um some consequence to handle that situation then you go to poor community relations that's another threat and the best way to handle this is appoint good community liaison officers because if you do have community relations is not good you would not have um that means the people that are where you are presently do not like you they could be hostile towards you and of course they if something bad is going to happen they're not going to let you know there's not going to be any intelligence the best way to avoid that the barrier against that is appoint good community liaison officers to uh, protect to um so that there's a good relationship within you and the community then inadequate physical barriers that's your fencing so make sure your fencing is good effective ac access control if you have some um cctv some um, should i say electronic gates key cards make sure they are top notch and very effective provide cctvs and intrusion de detection systems ids maybe some f way to know that um, the facility has been breached provide physical perimeter barriers fencing this is necessary also you need to have your fencing top notch so that um, at least it, it's not just a piece of cake for people to walk in and um, and cause harm provide physical perimeter barriers fencing at the facilities then surveillance your cctv and you should have um, probably personnel moving around to protect it just depends on how serious you want to take this how important the people you are um, that are staying at that facility or the people that are that live there how important it is or or work there how important they are then ineffective monitoring and surveillance so this could be also uh should i say the escalation factor ineffective monitoring and surveillance so you should they should proper probably be trained very well intelligence gathering regular patrol maybe every couple of hours you have um, a um, patrol or also you can make your pattern um pretty random or haphazard so that no one knows that okay this soldier passes here once it's two o'clock or this security personnel passes here once it's 3 p.m and after 3 p.m we don't see him till 5 p.m so you know that you you don't want them to be predictable so make uh these are our barriers to help with um monitoring and surveillance then so this is the left hand side we finished with the threat so of course, worst case scenario, we have the security exposure to armed attack, organized crime, kidnap, exposure to violence. And then so that has happened. They've gotten into the facility. They've kidnapped whoever they want to kidnap. They've malhandled whoever they want to malhandle. They've robbed whoever they want to rob. That is the top event. Then so what is the these are the pre the mitigative barriers so after this has happened how do you make sure that everyone is okay before it escalates to the the actual consequence which is either personal injury it could be a fatality also it could be hostage taking that means it's been kidnapped it could be post-traumatic stress so that's where well, this has happened how do you prevent it getting to this three so for personnel injury, of course, you um, on the facility or even if it's in transport, in transport, in transit, you need your first aid kit. If it's in a boat, if it's in a vessel, if it's in a car, if it's on the facility or in the place where the person is being protected, you need your first aid kit just in case um, they get malhandled but don't eventually 
um, it doesn't end up being a very serious injury. You have your first aid kits, you have your resusc uh, resuscitatory training to all field personnel, meaning every, every, all the field personnel and the people around should be trained in first aid. That is very, very helpful. First aid is always available on sites, meaning you should draw your roast as well. Even if everyone is not a first aider, at least at every point in time, there should be one or two first aiders on site to help just in case we have this top event because it will be bad if you have the top event and then or it's only people that are not trained in first aid that are left or that are on site. That would be really, really bad. Because then that's when it could escalate to this. Another um, another barrier is administration of first line treatment by nurse on site on duty. So if you normally have a nurse on site, yeah, it would be good to have them 24 hours, especially it, this also depends on how risky the situation is, how high the risk is. Then um, emergency response plan, you need this. Your emergency response plan must always be there so that you know what to do when there's an emergency. And then you have your emergency response plan. This is critical uh, for governments and uh, whatever kind of government agencies I, that you would need. Also, you need your med, re res your med rescue, your medivac, stuff like ambulance it could be um a helicopter a um what's it called i forgot a heli um helivac i can't even remember exactly but um a helicopter that is more or less like an ambulance to um evacuate anyone that's been injured um also so whatever form of rescue you need that on sites or at least in close proximity so that if the person's situation is very bad, the personnel, you could have them come help the person. Then you have investigation and prosecution, which is not really a barrier, but at least it could help. It's not really a barrier against this, but it would definitely help to be able to pinpoint whoever did the, whatever wrong there was. Then there's hostage taking. So if you, they take hostages after this top event, you have your security emergency response plan and procedures. So there should be a plan in place in case there's a kidnap, maybe alert the authorities, maybe um, there should be maybe probably a tracking device that could probably lead to where they are in case they are taking hostage. Maybe um, everyone's phones should always be on and their GPS should always be on so that you can and everyone should be able to track their phones when such things happen or their sim cards should be trackable you know you could come up with all sorts just to make sure that if they get kidnapped then there's something to be done all the agencies you are alert, or it could be some kidnap insurance which you would um, get the money and go pay emergency response plans of course, that's kind of like working with the government, but more or less like a security emergency response, investigation and prosecution. Of course, you need to have that in place so that um, they don't go, the perpetrators do not go scot free. That's all barriers for hostage taking. You could come up with a lot more barriers. Like I said earlier on, you can come up with insurance to pay for it, and you could come up with. Um, Get creative as far as it's credible. Then post-traumatic stress. This could also happen. So you should ha you should have medical attention on site, information to personnel to help them to have to try to reduce or, if possible, avoid it getting to the position where they have serious PTSD because that could actually it actually ruins lives. You have find people still been affected by um, an event that occurred 20 30 years ago it's still like fresh in their memory so if they're getting to this situation you want to make sure that you have everything in place your emergency response your training medical attention to make sure they don't go into shock and they don't have very crazy ptsd so thank you everyone for watching. That's the bow tie on security. You can use it in oil and gas. You can use it for just a um, normal high, um, high, should I say high, um, should I say people who are at a high risk of getting kidnapped.
and um, yeah you can use the bow tie for that it's just of plainly security thank you everyone for watching this is promoting safety engineering my name is Sean Toby and um, thank you please like the video subscribe to my channel do have a lovely day thank you bye bye